Good morning. So today's video is totally different to the usual university vlog style video, but it's the South African uh, elections on Wednesday, really important elections where we all vote for who we want to lead the country. And so since it's my first time that I get to vote uh, at 19 years old now, I thought I'd read through the three main political parties in South Africa, the ANC, EFF and DA's election manifestos, their official in writing promises to the country what they'll do if they win the majority of parliamentary seats in the elections and what they will do for the country if you vote for them. But I'm just going to highlight some of the interesting parts of the manifestos that I just read through over the last like hour and a half. They're super long, so I'll probably miss lots. But please, whatever you do, do go and vote on Wednesday. Um, there's been lots of talk in that of people not wanting to vote because they don't feel a specific party, um, uh, a specific individual party lives up to what they expect of political parties or and they don't like the way the political parties handle certain issues. But please, please go vote. By not voting, you are admonishing yourself of any responsibility. You are leaving your constitutional duty to be of an active citizen and to vote in your elections. Uh, by not voting, you secede your right for the next five years to complain about anything that happens in the country because you didn't take the responsibility to go out and vote and make your voice heard and exercise your constitutional right to have a say in how your country is run. But um, obviously these manifestos aren't going to uh, get carried out. Uh, if 10% of each manifesto got carried out by the government that enacted them, uh, the country would be an incredible, amazing place. Um, but yeah, let's go straight to it. I got a whole long list of notes here. And uh, let's do it. So the EFF, the Economic Freedom Fighters, um, they're ridiculously ambitious, which I really like and I respect them for that. They have a huge focus on black people and undoing the wrongs of the past that still persist into 2019, specifically with regards to uh, land redistribution. Quite a big trend I noticed was that the EFF uh, nationalizes, whereas the DA privatizes. Very different ideologies here. Um, the DA wants to privatize state-owned enterprises like ESCOM and SAA, uh, that's the airline, floundering airline, by the way, uh, so as to create competition and get these uh, giant state-owned enterprises out of the shit they've gotten themselves into, whereas the EFF wants to nationalize them, create government control over many uh, enterprises, or nationalize the Reserve Bank, and that so that there's more government control of things. The ANC is kind of sitting on the fence with regards to this. On some issues, they, are, they have varied opinions, but they also, s similar to the EFF, lean towards nationalism. Uh, make of that what you will. Uh, with regards to the actual layout of their manifestos, the ANC is very vague. I wasn't impressed with their manifesto. They had very flowery language without any specific plans. The EFF had bullet points of exactly what they want to happen in the country, but also without a lot of substance behind it. The EFSS manifesto seemed like a more of a, a giant list of nice-to-haves, whereas the DAs had this long paragraphs about specific plans that they want to enact, which I actually found a lot more difficult to read, but at the end of the day, I guess, says something about what they actually have in store for the country. Um, I like the EFF's massive revolutionary plans, I really do, but I see a lot of depth lacking in their practical applications, um, especially when they promised to lend out musical instruments for free to impoverished musicians. I don't even think first world countries like Norway have a lot of programs like that. So, yeah. Let's move on straight to the EFF. So the EFF's emphasis for the 29 general elections are on land and jobs. Consequently, the EFF's theme for the 29 elections is our land and jobs now. The EFF, this is uh, quoting directly from them, believes in expropriation of South Africa's land without compensation nationalization of mines, banks, and other strategic sectors of the economy without compensation, building state and government capacity which will lead to the abolishment of tenders, free quality education, healthcare, houses, and sanitation, massive development of the African economy, and advocating for a move from reconciliation to justice on the entire continent, open, accountable, corrupt, free government and society without fear of victimization by state agencies. I like it. I really like this from the EFF. Um, the EFF will pass a law that will make all public representatives and servants to forfeit their pension funds and savings if they are found guilty of corruption. South Africa's got a massive corruption problem, and I think this is a really nice way of deterring corruption from happening. Um, the EFF uh, has got plans to educate people, police and government on LGBTQI issues, and to inform the justice system of LGBTQI issues and how to best handle them. Um, 
Under the EFF government, all students will fall under one school system and all matric learners will write the same examinations. The independent examination board will be abolished. Uh, as someone who had an IEB education, which I'm very grateful for, <clears throat> I see this becoming a huge problem. Our uh, schools in the country have got quite, uh, quite a long way to go. We've got a big problem with our education system. And uh, the IEB, the Independent Examination Board, similar to the Cambridge system from overseas, in, in, is a private school system. Um, this again goes with the EFF nationalization plans. Um, I don't know. I don't know about this one. The EFF, now we're talking about uh, higher education like university, will cancel all student debt, reintegrate all students who were excluded on the basis of fees, and give certificates, diplomas, and degrees to all students who passed and were denied because of unpaid fees. This is fair, but it's a massive problem uh, funding university studies. And as someone who's in university now and has got many friends that have got bursars and that are paying off their varsity fees in various different ways, I see this as a, a real nice to have. It's a massive, massive problem. And to cancel all student debt, that's a ton of money uh, that you're just getting rid of instantly. The EFF will also uh, increase the intake at in institutions of higher learning at both universities and technical uh, colleges by 20% annually. Um, the university is full as it is. There's no way it can handle more like that. So where's the money coming from? Where's the facilities coming from? This is, from the EFF government is a, an empty promise. Um, the EFF government will cancel all contracts with independent power producers and will stop the rollout of new independent power producers immediately. See, this is back with their national evasion plans. I don't like this because ESCOM is floundering as it is, and we need independent power producers to create competition in the energy industry so that we don't have load shedding anymore. Um, the EFF government will nationalize all mines and mineral wealth in South Africa by the year 2023. The EFF government will nationalize the South African Reserve Bank and discontinue its private ownership. Again, nationalization, make of it what you will. I don't believe in a government's... Um, competency to run all these specific industries as competently as private industries, but maybe you feel differently. Um, the EFF will increase social grants by like 50% to 200%, I think in most cases, I was reading through the list of that. Um, social grants are a very, uh, a very powerful way of empowering people that don't have jobs enough, so I like this from them. The EFF government will maximally collect taxes with the aim of a 20% increase in current annual tax collections. Whether that comes down to decreasing corruption and getting more tax from the uber wealthy or taxing the individual average middle class person, I don't know, but uh, as a taxpayer that sounds pretty scary to me. And the EFF government will abolish the eToll system and will physically remove all eToll structures from our roads. Good for you guys. Fuck yes. I agree. Now moving on to the DA. Um, the DA is very measured and realistic by comparison to the EFF, whereas the EFF is very, they're a revolutionary party by nature, that's why they wear the red overalls. Um, but the DA is very measured and realistic in comparison. They've got a big focus on international relations as well, whereas the EFF is very isolationist and they're very focused on South Africa and uh, local business and local, um, local everything really. The DA has also got a, a global perspective, which, I, which I'm a fan of. Um, the talk here of relaxed foreign exchange controls for individuals or businesses willing to invest in the country to provide insurances that they can assess their, access their funds as needed. We need investment in the country, we need foreign money, we need foreign help, we can't do everything by ourselves. So I really like the, this from the DA. The DA is the only party to talk about climate change, which is obviously, obviously it's a very important issue, climate change, and uh, if none of the other political parties are talking about it, it kind of makes me worried about where the country is heading. Because South Africa is actually a really beautiful country in terms of nature and the environment and that. And we're trying to keep it that way. Um, so, yeah, just if it's important to you, know that the DA is the only party really uh, enacting any meaningful policies, especially with regards to energy distribution and that. They talk a lot about uh, finding renewable energy and specific plans to increase spending in the renewable sector. The DA will introduce fiscal spending rules to prevent the debt to GDP ratio continuing to spiral out of control. Uh, this would implement a debt ceiling at a maximum of 60% of GDP. We've got a huge amount of debt in the country, and so actually handling that debt in a meaningful manner is important. Um, the DA will root out corruption at ESCOM and other state-owned enterprises in order to more efficiently manage procurement and prevent irregular and wasteful expenditure. 100%. Um, ESCOM and a lot of other state-owned enterprises like the uh, airline SAA, uh, huge hotbeds of maladministration and corruption and actually just terrible pitholes of money. 
Um, so this is a really important one, actually, the fact that they will uh, really commit to rooting out corruption and restructuring the way these entities are run. The DA and the EFF oppose BEE, um, Black Economic Empowerment. Um, this, these are the DA's words here. We empathetically reject the approach to Black Economic Empowerment as carried out by the ANC, which has only served to enrich a politically connected elite and to dampen economic growth at the cost of job creation. Now, the big issue that the EFF wants to handle is uh, land expropriation, taking land away from, <clears throat> from farmers and from, well, I think, mostly white people, because they, they talk about the majority of the country being black and the minority being white, and the 75% majority only living on, a, I think, 10% of the land. And so this expropriation of land without compensation has been a big issue of the EFFs recently. And so here the DA says, We are directly opposed to the ANC and EFFs plan to change the constitution to allow government to expropriate land without compensation. South Africa suffers from a history of black people being denied land ownership. We do not need to change the constitution to address this. We need government action, and by allowing for populist expropriation without compensation, the government will collapse the agricultural sector, and this will hurt the hundreds of thousands of South Africans who stand to lose their jobs in this sector. Those who will be hurt most are already some of the most vulnerable in our country. I agree with that. Good focus. Uh, yeah, the DA has got a really good focus on the TVID colleges. Um, uh, institutional colleges and that that aren't universities but uh, skill based uh, colleges that train like plumbers and electricians and that not everyone can and should go to university it's a very theoretical based approach to learning uh, and so I really like the DA's big focus on expanding increasing admissions to and pouring more money into institutional colleges like this the DA will audit key basic infrastructure such as roads railways and air freight facilities with the aim of identifying the most serious maintenance backlogs holding back regional and international trade. Again, good focus on international trade. And the DA will immediately place SAA under business rescue. Once stabilized, privatize the three state-owned airlines, SAA, Mango, and SA Express. Legislation will be amended to allow greater foreign ownership in SAA in line with international trends. This is 100% a massive one. SAA burns through billions of rands, I think, every month. Um, so they need to be put on rescue plan. That's a black hole of money that we need to fix. Uh, and we've got a big ego about having a national carrier and airline that needs to be thought about again. We need to, need to so solve this problem. The VA will end ESCOM's monopoly by breaking it up into electricity generation and transmission entities. This will be done by establishing an independent body owned by the state, by, uh, tasked with buying electricity from electricity generators. 100%. This is a great idea of splitting ESCOM into generation, transmission, and I think uh, distribution. This is so that we can reduce waste uh, in electricity production, and so that we can drive down the cost of electricity production, and also so that we actually give people electricity. Because at the moment, ESCOM is full of corruption, and ESCOM has got a massive uh, backlog of tasks to do. Like, they haven't built a new power station for the last 10 years, which is a fucking problem. That's why we have load shedding occasionally. Um, so this is a really, really important one. The EFF, in contrast, doesn't mention a lot about ESCOM. They just say they want to nationalize it and take control of it. And the ANC also kind of just is very vague on it. The, uh, the DA's policy on this, I think, is the best. Uh, the DA has various housing plans with multiple plans for various income levels. I, I really like that. Um, this is also a very interesting one. The DA will work with private healthcare insurance companies to extend the insurance coverage range in a manner which would improve the affordability of options for the lower and middle class, with the aim of having more than 50% of citizens covered by private healthcare providers. This is really cool. In contrast to the ANC and the EFF's national health insurance funds and the national healthcare plans, um, the DA is recognizing that private healthcare insurance companies have got a lot of shit working already and really do do their jobs properly. And so trying to get citizens on board with this would actually be really beneficial. Um, the DA will introduce specialist teacher training colleges for primary school educators in every province and establishing the National Education Evaluation Inspectorate as a Chapter 9 institution to evaluate and inspect school facilities, principals, school management teams, and governing bodies. 100%. Uh, in contrast to the EFF's um, plan to... Uh, get rid of the IEB education system. I think this is a more measured approach as well. We need to go out into the country, see what's working and see what isn't working, and you know make plans for this to improve all the schools everywhere. Um, the DA will provide LGBTQIA plus sensitization training in government services, enforce a more strident stance on corrective rape 
and LGBTQI related hate crimes. This is very similar to the EFF's policy. Solid. I like it. The DA national government will introduce a minimum sentence of 15 years for anybody felt guilty of corruption. Uh, this would mean an automatic 15 year prison sentence. 100%. I think it's a good idea. Similar to the EFF's policy as well. The DA is the only people to talk about climate change. They talk about energy efficiency, mandatory energy efficiency labeling, improved energy efficiency standards for buildings and additions to existing buildings, and yeah, upscaling the installation of renewable energy projects around the country by creating a labeling environment for investment by independent power producers. Again, that theme of privatization and getting what's working already, private power supplies to help the country. Um, really cool, really interesting. Moving on to the ANC. So the ANC talks a lot at first of their past accomplishments as a party, since they are the party that has been in political power since 1994. Cool stuff. I wasn't very impressed with their manifesto because it was very vague, and despite the fact that they've had 20 years to think on this shit and to do a lot of stuff, there wasn't uh, a lot of new policies or a lot of new plans. They just kind of... They spent like almost uh, a third of the manifesto talking about past accomplishments, which is great, but the country has still got a lot of shit wrong with it, and so... Not so good, ANC. Um, ANC. We will address monopolies, excessive economic concentration, abuse of dominance by large corporations, and the growth inhibiting structure of the economy by deconcentrating and transforming the economy and opening it up to participation by small and medium enterprises. Uh, good, good, I like that. Uh, focusing on small economic growth, good on you. We will carry out a sustainable land reform program, he has the land redistribution problem, that expands participation in and ownership of agricultural production, advances food security, and helps reverse the apartheid spatial separation of our cities and towns. This will be done through a range of measures, including expropriation without compensation. And that's all the ANZ says about land expropriation. Um, the EFF had a whole lot more bullet points on it, the DA had a whole paragraph arguing against it, but the ANC is again, once again very vague about this, which leads me to think they haven't thought about it that much and they don't actually have many solutions. Um, so yeah, the ANC got a list of bullet points here of what they plan to do. The ANC plan to create an extra 275,000 jobs each year by boosting local demand for goods, investing more in mining, manufacturing agriculture and expanding export markets. Um, Increasing opportunities for young people by increasing internship training. Uh, implementing the national minimum wage to improve the lives of 6 million workers. Once again, that uh, small focus on individuals and their salaries are uh, important. The ANC talks a lot about the digital revolution and fixing stuff digitally with like giving schools and kids tablets and access to the internet and that. But I think there's a lot of other problems we need to fix first. And even as a big fan and proponent of technology, I think there's other shit we've got to get right first. So good on you, ANC, for thinking ahead to the future. But I think there's more important things to focus on. Uh, the EFF also mentioned it quite a lot, digital moving forward and that, the DA to a lesser extent. But make of it what you will. The ANC will implement a national health insurance fund to provide quality health care free. Uh, cool. That's, again, all we've got from them. But good stuff, you know, we need, whether it's this or the private uh, medical aid, healthcare, we've got to get more people on healthcare so that you don't get injured and give away all your life savings in a single operation. Um, the ANC will expand access to social security benefits and increase unemployment insurance fund coverage. Good stuff. Release state land for people to build their own homes, develop several major projects that bring, bring together economic nodes, housing, smart technologies, and public transportation. Good stuff. Again, uh, just touching on the land expropriation issue there. The ANC will take decisive action against state capture and corruption in public institutions and state-owned enterprises. They will conduct lifestyle audits of public officials and prevent public servants from doing business with the state. Good stuff. I like it. Got to take a hard stance on corruption, even if some of your own political party are part of that corruption. Um, the ANC will make tender systems more transparent, efficient, and credible. I think this is a big issue with the corruption as well. Tender systems are often convoluted and very almost like a black box. You don't see what happens and how uh, certain tenders get awarded. This is a big one. This is important. Um, the ANC will develop a sustainable agriculture strategy to mitigate the impact of climate change and identify new growth areas for production. That's it as well. That's all they say about climate change. And so that's it. Um, very vague. I don't know if it helped you at all, but it helped me to just read through the uh, manifestos and see what the promises of each political party are and to see which promises align most with your values. Once again, please, please go vote. Please don't think that your vote doesn't matter. You know, if 
10 million people all think, oh, my vote doesn't matter. That's 10 million votes gone. That's a 25% of the population, you know. Please go out and vote. Even if it is to keep uh, a different political party out of parliament and to, to reduce the amount of uh, representation they have in parliament, please go vote and please make your voice heard. Uh, use the constitutional duty that you have and that the constitutional rights that so many people have fought for and died for in the past. Please use it for your advantage. Um, so yeah, this is very interesting for me as well. As a first time voter, I wanted to be responsible in my voting decisions and I think I've got a really good idea of what the different political parties, the main three at least, are promising. Also as well, if you don't want to vote for one of the big three, there are literally hundreds, I think there's like 200 other political parties that you can vote for. Lots of them focus on specific issues. Um, so go and have a quick Google on the IEC's website as well if you want to see who else you can vote for on that. But please, please vote. It's your constitutional duty. And yeah, I think I'm going to wrap it up now. It's 10 to 12. If you've made it this far into the video, thank you very much for sticking around. It was interesting for me. I hope it was interesting for you. If you're a first time viewer here, this is not what we usually do. I usually film uh, Varsity vlogs and what's going on in the computer engineering world at Tux and in my own life and interesting stuff like that. So stick around if you're keen for that, else have a great life. And uh, thank you for watching. Good luck with the elections on Wednesday, everyone.